Hey, what's good, Self-Direct Investors? I hope you're all doing great, and I want to welcome you back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jordan. I'm the mind behind Make More Capital, and today we're coming at you with This Week in Cannabis News from February 27th to March 5th. Now, before we jump in, if you enjoy this video or you learn something, please just leave a like on it as it really helps out my channel. And of course, if you want to learn how to take advantage of this generational investment opportunity, subscribe below so that you don't miss any future videos, and then there's plenty of content for you to go back, rewatch, and educate yourself with. I've tried to put all the news and facts in one place so you can watch episodes over time to learn about the evolution of the industry, identify top companies that you keep seeing pop up, and take advantage whenever you feel ready. But very happy to report this news out of Kansas City, Missouri as in their first month since launching for adult use cannabis after legalizing in November of 2022, very recently, they've already seen 102 million of cannabis sold in the first month of legal rec sales per state of Missouri. And so a bit of detail, state of Missouri announced cannabis sales topped 100 million in the first month of rec sales. This is what happens when you focus on providing equal access to opportunity to everyone in your state and not focusing on social equity, which actually provides equal outcome or no one gets a chance to even get started like we've seen in New York. And so the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services released the sales Friday as part of its monthly report. 71.7 million came from adult use sales and 31.2 million from medical use sales. So love to see these strong sales coming in um, from both sides. With that, we've got another one. Missouri's recreational cannabis sales spike in February has not slowed down. So while we saw a strong, assuming this is January since launching, February is apparently still heading in the right direction. So you can pause to read this snippet, not as important. Um, from what I gathered going through this earlier, but just to highlight, we've increased our staff by about 120%. We've had to force overtime, working Saturdays, a lot of crews are working 10 to 12 hour days throughout the week too, so just doing our best job to keep up. So if you've taken the risk to join the cannabis industry anywhere in the country, this is the kind of thing that you wanna see because it highlights a free market at work, the American way, providing as much equal access to opportunity to people in the state as possible, the whole idea of uh, cannabis legalization. But Mitchum thinks part of the reason behind trending sales is proximity. Not only are Kansas residents crossing over to buy cannabis, but so are Illinois residents due to the exponentially cheaper tax rate. Ah, good to know. So they can buy a lot of the same product that's also sold in Illinois, but they're 20% cheaper because their tax is like 30% uh, and ours is nine, Mitchum said. Wow, ah, huge difference. As far as when the demand will taper off, that remains unclear. If interest does not settle, there may be price hikes and less flour to go around. Uh, you know, less supply, higher demand, higher prices, just what happens. And that's why we love to have 50 different states doing this experiment for us. We can pick from the best. Um, and regardless, Todd Harrison shares this one, Missouri continuing with that news just because we're on Missouri, but apparently their cannabis entrepreneurs are also going to receive some tax deductions as their lawmakers are working for the constituents, which you love to see, but Amendment 3 extended cannabis from medical to rec use and allowed Missouri to decouple from federal regulations regarding IRS Code Section 280E. And while their news, it might already be in effect, and so this one comes from Newswire, March 2nd, 2023, Missouri cannabis entrepreneurs to receive more tax deductions with Amendment 3, explains cannabis CPA experts. So there's more if you wanted to pause, but just some highlights. The result is significant tax benefits for Missouri cannabis businesses as they can now claim business deductions, including selling expenses, marketing expenses, and corporate overhead. So they're not discriminated against like uh, only the cannabis industry is, as opposed to every other industry in the U.S. Ridiculous still. Pause to read if you'd like a bit more snippets on it, but another example, according to Smith, if, the if a typical dispensary has 500000 of expenses that are disallowed because of the 280E provision at the federal level, the new legislation will save the dispensary approximately 25000 So it might not be much, but it's still something better than nothing from a cash flow perspective cannabis businesses that have paid estimates throughout the year based on 280 limitations may be getting a sizable tax refund too so again just love to see states working for their constituents and again this is the american way just highlighting because if we compare missouri to maryland another state that legalized on the november 2022 ballot as well but has taken longer to launch because they're focusing on social equity and trying to provide equal outcomes which unfortunately if the longer they delay they should, they should provide no opportunities to anybody but fortunately, they're not delaying as long as New Jersey, uh, New York, and other states did. But so they're making small progress. Tom Angle shares the Maryland House Economic Matters Committee amended and approved a bill to create a regulatory framework for cannabis sales following voters' approval of the legalization ballot referendum in November. So good to see them aiming towards July 1st to launch this. But again, perfect example. We see two states. One focuses on equal access to opportunity. That's Missouri. They're crushing it already. One focuses on equal outcomes, making everyone equally poor, using some Marxist theory, trying to apply that to business, and clearly it just doesn't work like the American way works. And so love to see these experiments in action and to highlight them out for you. And with that, we've got some news out of Illinois as Illinois adult use cannabis monthly sales figures come in for March or for February, 2023. Sorry, this is updated as of March 2nd, but keep in mind with Missouri now being legal and having their taxes much cheaper than Illinois, that's where we're seeing some of the sales move over to Missouri. So it's not ideal, but fortunately I don't see the drop to be a big concern as if we look at last year, there's a drop from January to Feb only to bounce back quite large in March and April. As we see three times a year, typically March and April, the spring 
comes and people want to spend for 420, then July peak summer, and then for the holidays in December as well. And on top of that, Illinois is supposed to open, finally, those extra 185 social equity dispensaries that have been approved for a long time, uh, but there was a lawsuit that was delaying it. So again, highlighting that Marxist theory and practice doesn't work. And so better late than never, but we're anticipating before April, they're supposed to open those dispensaries. So that'll finally give these minority entrepreneurs and small business owners the opportunity to compete, um, to, to generate legal sales, um, and just help this industry thrive in Illinois, which we would want to see, right? So again, less social equity, the better. But on top of that, highlighting another state with less social equity and more competition, adult use cannabis sales in Michigan hit 1.8 billion last year. And so this is adult cannabis sales alone, 1.8 billion. Um, you know, nice to see Michigan get to that point. And so just going to highlight adult use cannabis sales topped 1.8 billion during 2022. According to the Michigan Department of Treasury, municipalities that opted into sales, 224 municipalities in all, will receive a share of 59.9 million from cannabis excise taxes collected on sales. And so I'm sure that any state that did not opt in is now a little bit jealous because they're not getting 60 million. Now, of course, if that 60 million goes back, you want to ensure that it goes into the hands of people that you can trust that have integrity and that are going to use it properly. And that's a whole other story. Um, but uh, nonetheless, happy to highlight the tax revenue was collected from 574 licenses throughout the states. So think about that. 574 locations, competition, providing as much equal access to opportunity. And that's why more people are likely thriving in Michigan than in New York or some other states. But so in all in all, a uh, bit more of the detail in the tax breakdown, but got to say that seems to be a win for Michigan as well. Another state focused less on social equity. And so uh, big news though that we ended the week with, thanks Todd for sharing, DOJ launches application for cannabis pardon certificates. Uh, where were you when the war on drugs unwound? Slowly but surely. Uh, and so the news coming out of BloombergLaw.com, Biden Justice Department opens window for cannabis amnesty. Uh, issue resonated with young voters in recent election cycles, well, most of Americans actually, more than 66%. Number of eligible applicants is less than 7,000 people. And so that's according to this article. I will put it below if you wanted to uh, to read through it, but just providing the summary. Well, this is from leafly.com, how to apply for a Biden weed pardon. Now, this one has a bit of different information from the other one. This one says now, now more than 20,000 people are eligible. So I don't know if that's changed overnight. Um, but again, just want to share the news. And if you want to learn more, you can dig a bit deeper because I, I can't focus on all the stories, but you pause to read here if you're interested. And then uh, if you'll need to apply just some of the details, if you wanted to see what, what was involved. Uh, but full link below if you wanted to grab and read through. And so with that, um, big uh, common sense tweet here from Jerry Derivani uh, and wanted to highlight it as the other news that we got Todd Harrison shares that Biden's attorney general says the DOJ is still working on federal cannabis policy approach, taking the sweet ass time when they don't need to. Um, it will be very close to what was done in the Cole memorandum. We're not quite done with it yet. And so link will be below if you wanted to read through it, but this is essentially um, the juice of it. But love Jerry for highlighting this. This is all you have to do. Open file, colmemo.com, control, copy, control, and control V, find, replace coal with Garland, control, save as the Garland memo doc. That is literally all you have to do. You just reinstate the memo that was taken out or uninstated in 2018 by Jeff Sessions. It's so simple. Why they haven't been able to do it already, uh, obviously boggles all of our minds, but we're holding out that something might be on the horizon based on all the momentum picking up. And so with that, uh, out of states, just a reminder that next week, uh, yeah, this week coming up, we will see Oklahoma vote on legal cannabis. So thanks, Tom, for sharing. As early voting begins this week on an Oklahoma cannabis legalization initiative on Tuesday's ballot, advocates are highlighting a new report detailing criminaliz criminalization's toll and touting a new ad featuring a former police chief who backs the reform. And so obviously, so many benefits to reform. Uh, I've highlighted that on my channel for a long time now, um, but more on this if you wanted to read about you know how Oklahoma plans to hopefully win this election but I think the people um, have benefited there from medical for a long time and they're going to see the business opportunity and you know how it's going to strengthen the economy and with that Tom Engel shares some news out of Florida happy to update that the Florida campaign to place a cannabis legalization initiative on the 2024 ballot has now collected over 420,000 valid signatures a highly symbolic milestone so huge news out of Florida love to see this picking up as it seems like just yesterday, they're at you know, a little bit under 200,000. And so right now, currently, uh, over 420,000. Love to see that. But also interesting, this came out of nowhere. Thanks, Joe Greisler, for sharing. But a Senate Democrat files a bill to legalize rec cannabis in Florida. And so Victor Torres, a Democrat member of the Florida Senate, filed a bill on Friday that seeks to legalize rec cannabis use in the state for individuals 21 and older. And so while they're collecting these for the 2024 ballot, could Florida legalize sooner than that? 
be in everybody's best interest based on the 21 million population, the 100 million tourists, and how big of a wreck market that will be when the day comes. And so uh, this is early news, though. Uh, we'll update you over time, but the link will be below if you wanted to read through it. And so with that, news from Verano to report fourth quarter and full year 2022 financial results on March 30th, 2022. And so um, more and more MSOs are announcing their dates. And so this will be when Verano announces closer to the end of the month, a little bit later after some of the MSOs. But with that, figured I'd share this uh, as it's an interesting insider form, as apparently Cowan Financial Products LLC has filed a form SC or Yes, SC13G with the SEC reporting 5.025% ownership of Verano. And so you don't see that every day. Uh, financial institution taking a large ownership share in an MSO. Let's hope uh, this is starting a new trend and we're seeing a little bit more of that. But with that, wanted to share from Newswire, TrueLeaf opens new medical cannabis dispensary in Beckley, West Virginia. TrueLeaf continues to expand in some of these lesser competitive markets while the getting is good. And so their grand opening celebration was March 3rd yesterday. So you can pause to read more um, about uh, this dispensary location and this opening. But TrueLeaf also operates, I believe, 10 medical dispensaries in the state in total now with this new opening. So let me know in the comments if I'm wrong there. But from reading this, Trulieve operates medical dispensaries across West Virginia and Bell, Huntington, Hurricane, Milton, Parkersburg, South Charleston, Weston, two in Morgantown. Um, and then this one in Beckley as well. And so with that, wanted to share this one. Thanks, Scott Willis from Grizzle. Very interesting graphics to look at because while we couldn't have anticipated that Congress would delay this far, uh, especially as dispensaries continue to be targets for armed robberies and people continue to die, it sucks. But all we can do is look at where we're at now you know, honestly, and then try and make the best decisions we can to help us going forward. And so here are the five charts you need to see. Uh, thread on Verano, TrueLeaf, CureLeaf, Columbia Care, Air Wellness, Cresco Labs, and GTI, which might be the only MSOs worth investing in at this point. I don't know, um, but uh, it's not advice, of course, just sharing the news. And so with this, the first one, current ratio measures if they can pay current liabilities if due today. Below one is bad. And so you can grab the full link below or you can take your time and pause to read. We're just going to scroll down to the second one, pause to read. Third one, fortunately, seems like every MSO can pay off their debt, which is a good sign. Um, this one, pause to read. And then this one as well. Uh, bottom line included. Pause to read as well. So thanks, Scott. Very interesting looks at the industry, ways that I had not considered looking at before. Um, and so hopefully you can take from that what you will. Um, but some more states news. Todd Harrison, thanks for sharing new rec cannabis legalization bill in Pennsylvania. Unexpected. And while we've heard a lot of chatter out of PA, we've seen less little action. But just happy to share this. And I will update you if something actually you know comes from this. The balance of power shifted in Harrisburg and advocates hope that 2023 could be the year rec cannabis is finally legalized in Pennsylvania. We would like that to be the case too. Please get it done for us. Uh, and with that, Joe Grazler sharing this one out of Hawaii. Um, Maui Now, a measure that would legalize adult use cannabis in Hawaii, passed the Senate Committees on Commerce and Consumer Protection and Ways and Means on Thursday, and now heads to the Senate floor for consideration. So I will update you next. But much like PA, we've heard a lot of talk out of Hawaii, not much action, and then boom, already. Maui Wowie, legalize Nowie, please. And then this one, North Carolina, medical only, but still uh, a good step in the right direction. The North Carolina Senate has given preliminary approval to a bill legalizing the use of medical cannabis by patients with qualifying conditions. What's next? Now, I do feel like I've reported on this story a few times already, so I'm going to wait until the North Carolina Senate actually passes this bill into law before I talk about this again. But nonetheless, this article from High Times down below if you wanted to read it. And so while other states are doing good things, we've got to highlight the laughing stock that is New York just because. And this one comes from MJ Biz Daily as New York regulators increase adult use cannabis retail licenses to 300. You cannot make this shit up how incompetent these idiots are. Because if you've only opened three legal dispensaries, yet you've approved 150 licenses, instead of opening up the other one, 147 dispensaries to provide equal access to opportunity to everyone in your state, which is the whole point of you promoting equity, which is not what equity is. But regardless, they just decide to num double the number of dispensary licenses and keep three legal dispensaries to compete with the 1,500 illegal ones that operate because the consequences are worth paying and less annoying than jumping through the regulatory hoops. You cannot make this shit up. Oh my God, we got to get these Marx Marxists and communists out of power and just get you know some people with practical business sense in there so we can save the sinking ship sooner than later. But uh, more on this if you wanted to read out of New York. And another example of that, thank you, Pop Mom, for sharing this one. Uh, con concerns grow or concern grows over states' ability to finance social equity. They can't because everyone knows this is a farce. It's not going to work. And so more on the story if you wanted to read it out of cranesnewyork.com, but hilarious to highlight just the reality of what these idiots, the regulators in New York, don't don't seem to comprehend. Holders were told the fund will offer 10-year loans between 800k and 1.2 million at 
which is predatory, you wouldn't want that loan in the first place, a rate she called shocking. But so far, she and others haven't seen any loan documentation or agreement to review for business purposes. And even crazier when you consider some of the predatory loan rates that we've seen, even what MSOs are dealing with, because that means 10% is cheap. And so, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't there a bill in Congress, the Democratic-controlled Congress right now, um, that would help bridge this gap, not only reducing the discrimination that only the cannabis industry faces, no one else really seems to face what they do, and at the same time reducing those loan rates so that small mom and pop shops and social equity entrepreneurs aren't suffocated and choked out of their business after two years? You know, that same bill might get cash off the streets um, and allow these companies to work with banks just like every other industry in the U.S. too. Like, it'd be great if they would hold that for a vote because they have the votes and clearly it would make a big fucking difference if Schmuck Schumer would do his job. But I digress. Uh, with that, this one comes from Clear UK. Wanted to share good news out of Italy is the Supreme Court rules growing cannabis for personal use is not a crime. Yes, uh, amen to that. So it comes from the cannabishealthnews.co.uk. We'll put the link down there if you wanted to read through it. But looks like a US Supreme Court could basically take a page from this and announce something like this because obviously home grow should not be a crime, um, but at the same time also shouldn't have any federal overhang uh, making government any bigger than it already is. And so with that, few other stories before we head off. This one, a study from Springerlink. Uh, cannabidiol and cannabis sativa as a potential treatment in vitro prostate cancer cells silenced with RBB P6 and PC3 xenograft. Now, I don't know what all that means, but when we see that this can potentially shrink prostate cancer cells, that's probably worth the scheduling and studying more, right? So while the evidence continues to build up, just happy to highlight, uh, you can read here the background and the methods used in the study. I'm um, just going to give you the news uh, from the results and the conclusion. We demonstrated that cannabidiol is a viable therapy to treat prostate cancer cells. Sounds like a big fucking deal. Should be at least a much bigger deal and worth looking into more uh, and more in the mainstream. But in combination with silencing of our P, RBBP6. I don't know what RPPB6 does, uh, but this suggests the cannabis oil. Rather, cannabis sativa extract may play an important role in reducing cancer progression. Haven't we heard this before in the past? Seems like it's something worth looking into. And with that, coming from my once beloved country that has fallen into a shit show, but at least we've got legal cannabis, happy to share from CTV News, sales of beer, wine by volume, see historic declines in Canada. I wonder if there's any other factor, and that's likely what's pissing off a lot of alcohol companies, tobacco companies, and most importantly, big pharma companies as well. And so, salute to that, Shamsi. Very bullish for cannabis. Uh, thank you, Can Relief. Yes, people are trading alcohol for cannabis, no doubt there. But at the same time, I don't think Tanglefoot Daily is wrong also because crack, meth, and fentanyl are now becoming more affordable, and that is very sadly true. Um, but the fact is, cannabis is legal, and we've seen the benefits of any cannabis prohibition for a long time. So we keep pushing to get cannabis descheduled and to end the failed war on drugs once and for all. But that is it for today's episode, folks. I want to thank you so much for tuning in, and I really hope you got some value out of it. What did you think of the stories mentioned let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions and i'd be happy to address them but besides that if you enjoyed this video and you learned something please just leave a like on it um subscribe below if you want to catch more videos and i will catch you on wednesday for a midweek update in the world of cannabis and hopefully we uh, get the momentum continuing with more mso earnings as the weeks come on but have a great week everybody